Hey everyone, welcome to another Webflow community live stream. I'm your host, Nelson. Thank you for joining me today. Woo, it is a big day and we're going to start with community announcements. But actually, before we do that, hello to everyone who's in the live chat right now. Uh, let's see who's first in the door. I always like to see uh, Corey Jameson from Charlotte. Welcome, welcome. You're first in the door. And then we have Zach, Kyle Pitakelli. Welcome back. Miss you, buddy. Brian is back. Steven, crew, an official Webflow partner team. Awesome to have you here. We got Alex, uh, Zakaria, uh, Ray, Alex, uh, Peter. Yes, Peter. And I, I saw on Twitter that you're working on a redesign of your portfolio site. Oh, I can't wait uh, to see what you do. Um, let's see. The ripple effect is back. Um, people are asking, what's my shirt color? Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> it's not that loud today. It's the, it's what creatives wear. It's, it's, it's black and it's okay, you know, because all the colors are in here and, and, and not showing, but I, I gotta go shopping for a new one. All right. So I can't just wear the same thing over and over again, but, um, cut C saying looking good. Thank you so much. So where are you all from? I see, uh, Andreas from Germany, Cooper from Denver, Kayla Williams is here. Oh my gosh. So many people, so many new, new faces. I see in the chat room. So thank you. Thank you all for being here live. And if you're just watching, you're not in the live chat, that's totally fine too. Thank you for watching. And also if you're watching recording, we appreciate you spending your time with us. So uh, let's go to three community announcements. So uh, the first community announcement is one that we've already touched on uh, twice in the previous streams. And it's the Webflow Refugee Relief Fund. And um, if you have the the resources, the option to donate, please do so. Um, we uh, Webflow is matching your donations four to one. So if you donate to any of these verified organizations on our website, webflow.com slash four slash refugees, we'll match it four to one. So example, if you donate $10, we'll add in another 40 for a total of 50. And right now, the total so far is over 300,000. So great job to everyone in the community who is able to donate. And if you're able to donate, please do so. And let's keep this going. We want to reach 500,000 or even more, you know, let's, let's help out those in need. And yes. So thank you. Thank you to everyone who has donated second announcement. And it's a big one. And if you haven't heard the news yet, well, on webflow.com slash blog, we announced that we have received a new round of funding. Yes, this is a Series C funding, and it's going to enable Webflow to do a lot more, not just for the platform, but mainly for the community. And continuing this, this drive to empower everyone to build for the web. That's Webflow's mission. And the second mission is uh, also to help people lead uh, impactful and fulfilling lives. And uh, if you just read, it's basically a letter from Vlad to us, the community. And it actually made me kind of emo this morning as I'm reading it because it's so real. It's so honest. And that's what we know Vlad is. He's real and honest and just read through it. But the third community announcement is with this Series C funding, we are going to enable more things for the community. Yes, $10 million is going to go to directly to the community. So we're starting a community grants program. And um, yeah, I'm just like so blown away by this. And uh, what it's going to do, it's going to like help community members who want to empower more people. For example, like it says here in the blog post, uh, if you're doing community engagement, learning or networking events across the globe, we want to help you. We want to break down the barriers that um, that are uh, uh, that's holding you back from making these happen. I remember back in the day starting the San Diego Webflow meetup group and there was like two or three people and, you know, I was just buying pizza and, and soda and like, 
we should do it bigger, you know? We should do it bigger, bigger spaces for more people. Um, if you're like a YouTuber and you're creating tutorials, uh, we want to help you make your YouTube channel bigger or, you know, just give help you with the resources or tech or any learning. Oh, just, yeah, there's just so much we can do with this new grant. And if you want more information, go to webflow.com slash community dash grants and drop your email address and we'll let you know when this program uh comes out so yeah three big announcements again go to webflow.com slash blog for more information all about this Woo! yeah good good times for everyone in the webflow and no code community i see a lot of people in the chat saying congrats so exciting so incredible amazing Major news. Yes. Yes, I agree. All right. So uh, let's go on with the show. So uh, today, as you see uh, from the, the title, that uh, we're going to have Tim and Melissa join the stream. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn more about their career and their businesses in uh, while using Webflow. And then we're going to talk about their experience or yeah, their experience uh, filming for the new Generation No Code docuseries. Both of them have their own episodes. Tim was in episode one. Melissa was in episode two. So yeah, go check that out after the stream if you haven't done so already. And then we're going to do a special build with Tim and Melissa. They will show you how to build a completely custom uh, slider, slider component using the webflow cms so that's going to be interesting and then if we have time at the bottom of or the at the end of the hour we will give you some time to ask questions to them all right and more information about generation no code real quick uh you can watch it over at webflow.com tv don't go now hold on hold on but do it after this stream all right if you have the time Oh, whew. so super excited. Now, let's go ahead and bring Tim and Melissa onto the stream. Welcome, Tim and Melissa. Hey, thanks so much for having us. Hey. So excited, so excited. And again, congrats to your appearances on the Generation No Code. So, um, Tim, uh, I'm going to start with you as an icebreaker question, okay? So... Everyone knows, like everyone's calling you the goat of no code on the live chat. Love it. But what I think of Tim is the wizard because like that's his thing. Uh, his whole brand is like the wizard of Webflow or wizardry is actually his, his framework or, or his website. So Tim, being a successful wizard yourself, uh, which wizard would you want to be your sidekick? Gandalf, Harry Potter, or Doctor Strange? I'm going to go with Doctor Strange. OK. OK, why? Um, he's the only one I know. <laughs> OK, fair enough, fair enough. You you like that multiversal, uh, yeah, multiversal type of wizardry. OK, OK. Melissa, uh, my yes. question, my question to you, uh, if you could redesign uh, a site for any clothing or fashion brand, which one okay. would it be and why? I think I would love to redesign the Sarah website, maybe. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think that I would love to redesign that and make something a little bit more interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you shop at Zara a lot or is, is yes. that like your favorite? <laughs> oh, you. Okay. Okay. And then Everything like... I wear is Sarah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I've I've bought a, a jacket or two from from them. Yeah, they they have good fashion, but um Yes. I I, I get you're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but um I'm I, guilty. I, I'm guilty. <laughs> I I guess you you love it so much you're like, "Hey, Zara, please, I want to help you with your site. Let me build it with Webflow." Yes, and pay me in clothes. <laughs> I think that would be a good deal. I <laughs> think All right. So, um I just wanted to introduce both of you to the community for people who haven't uh, met you or have seen your episodes yet on uh, Generation No Code docuseries. So let's dive into your past career. Um, I'll start with you, Melissa. Um, 
where did the spark, where did your creative journey start and how did it get to no code? So for me, everything really started when I was little. Uh, my dad is a publicist back in Colombia, where I'm from. And I remember going into the agency and seeing the creatives work in the ads. That's when the ads used to be stamped and each typography used to have like a card. So it was really interesting to me seeing them work and my dad is super, super creative. So I just saw him all the time making comments and working on ads for print. So I think for me, everything just started from there and I'm just a creative person. So everything mm -hmm. around me is just art, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's, that's just where it started for me. Okay. And so when you mean by stamp, uh, uh, are you talking about like the letterpress where you'd like, uh, yeah. really? Yeah? yeah. Back then? Wow. Well, I don't know. Actually, wait, I don't know if it's letterpress. I don't know if in English the word, but hmm. it used to be just cards and then you would yeah. put them on top and you would have to like color on top of it. And then it would just go on the ad. So huh. yeah, it was very Asian. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with letterpress. Um, but uh, if, if that's where it started, yeah, yeah, a lot of mm -hmm. hard work. And like, you know, you, you yes. sometimes take it for granted that you can move uh, yeah. uh, using Figma, you can move a letter from one place of the page to another. And you don't really need to like reprint something over and over just to see if it works out. Exactly. Yeah. Now everything's so easy. And I remember how they used to do it back then. They even had a development team for photography. Mm. Um, so it was just so much work. And now everything's just so simple. I forgot easy. about that. Those those rooms yeah. where it's like a red light or something and you're like yes. putting the film in chemicals. And the smell. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. And so from, from those uh, creative beginnings, being immersed in in uh in that how did that lead over to no code so uh when i was working in data grant the artificial intelligence company as a growth marketer um they had to rebrand well i offered to rebrand re the company and one of those things was redoing the website yeah um now i had a startup back in 2014 and for me to be able to do anything there i had to hire developers so i always felt constrained like i wanted to do so many things but i couldn't do them because obviously you know i didn't have the funds to pay a whole mm. team i was able to pay a couple people but not a whole team so mm. for me that was always something that limited me to do yeah. more things so when i heard about webflow from my boss i remember opening the the website and for me, it just clicked in my head. Yeah. Like, wow, now I can do all these things. And when I opened the Webflow University, kudos to the education team and the content team, yeah. I absolutely lost it. So <laughs> I think a lot me, of people did too. Yes, exactly. Awesome. I, I feel like you're going to take this same story and then go to the headquarters of Zara or at least the marketing headquarters and be like, <laughs> all right, look. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Look what exactly. I can you do need for this. you. I mean, that's basically what I do with all of my clients. You need this. It's so good and it's so easy for you to manage in the future, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Tim, um, uh, let's go to you and uh, want to know, uh, we, we've learned a lot in the Generation No Code episode that you're in, how you helped 368, but let's go even further back. Where did your spark start for um, everything No Code? I think I had like a lot of creative sparks growing up, like little ones, but the first one I could remember was like making stop motion videos with Legos and going into Microsoft Paint and like drawing the lasers on and stuff. So that was like the earliest spark. Stop motion with Lego. I remember, I, I think the first stop motion Lego video I've ever watched was on, I don't know if it was YouTube or, or something even older, but it was like based off of uh, the first Matrix movie. And I was like, what? You can do this with Legos? Um, but uh yeah, so 
man, it must have taken you a long time to to film those Legos. And like, I guess, is that where your love for for film and creative start started? Well, I mean, film and and motion, because looking at wizardry and everything, everything you do is all about motion. Yeah, I mean, that's where it started. Like, I didn't realize this was something you can make a career from uh, till much later on. But like, that's where it all kind of like, I guess that spark began. So yeah, Lego is my my love language. So I'm like, Oh, my gosh. So that's where we connect. But um, then you mentioned, uh, wait, MS Paint. So you were yeah. animating with MS Paint? Yeah, all the uh, special effects, if you want to call them that. <laughs> Wait, wait, how how do you even do that? I, I, I'm so confused because MS Paint, um, there is no transparent background, but I, I'm so confused. How'd you do that? So each like frame would be a picture I'd take of the Legos and I would just paint over each frame to make like the laser from the gun or something. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you really took the time. See, that I I have so much respect for people uh who do motion graphics because like it takes so much research and so much time to execute on just like one or even two seconds of film mm -hmm. so and uh, for you to do for to do, to do that amazing so so humble beginnings from lego to ms paint um now how did it transition to the web I think in college, I took like a web design class and really fell in love with it. So I started like freelancing and that eventually brought me to applying at 368. Okay. You glossed over a lot. Uh, okay. So <laughs> web design in college, what, like what were you learning then? Was it just HTML and CSS or was it like, what Strictly was it? Strictly HTML, CSS. So it was like coding and design all in one. So our grade would be on everything, every part of it, which really helped uh, me foster that love for design and development side by side. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and what tool were you using during, during your college days? Photoshop for the design and Dreamweaver for the coding. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where a lot of people started. Same, yeah. same here. I'm all the way back in the, uh, what is it? Shockwave. That was before flash on macro media director. And, um, yeah, Macromedia Dreamweaver was my my love. Fireworks, Shockwave, and Dreamweaver. Just showing how old I am. <laughs> but <laughs> um, let's let's talk about your your business now. So, um, Melissa, your your business is called Eureka, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. And and now that you've left uh, you've left Datagram to to work on Eureka. Tell us more about that. Like, is that just you or do you have, did you start your own team or is that what you're trying to do in the future? No. So that's actually happening right now. When the documentary was filmed, I was just starting it oh, okay. uh, because at the beginning it was just me as a single freelancer. And my husband was actually uh, learning Webflow so he could come into the agency, but um, then when the documentary happened, I opened Eureka and now I have a team of like about four people, uh, UI developers, developer and designer, copywriter and myself. So yeah, now we're a little group. Yay. Congrats. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and awesome. I also work project based with a lot of people from the Webflow party. So I try to shoot them, you know, work so they can practice something that yeah. it's just, you know, smaller. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. And by the way, quick shout out to what you're doing. Webflow party every Saturday at what is like uh, 10 a.m. Eastern? Eastern Standard Time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember joining, <laughs> I think, two. No, no. One of those with David and yeah. from the webflow team and that was so fun so yeah check that yeah. out um so uh, tim life with 368 how's it going now that you finished the documentary and um what what's in the future for you and your team it's going great like we've been focusing a lot on like microsites so i'm looking at all these different games and like really innovative things that people are building with webflow now yeah. and it just gets me excited for like the type of stuff that we're gonna keep building so 
Yeah, yeah, so many things. Ah, oh, the future for the community is is so bright. And thank you both for again being on uh, Generation No Code. But uh, speaking of that, we're gonna jump to more questions about what it was like to film for a Generation No Code. And before we hop into that, I want to play the the main trailer for Generation No Code for those who haven't seen it yet. So, uh. Uh, Miguel, if you can, please roll that trailer. We got it. No code to me is being able to build something without having to actually write the code. It's opened up a new set of tools, unlocking potential for anyone to start an idea. No code and low code tools allow us to do real time marketing and tell the stories that matter to people right now. Going through all these stock sites, I just couldn't find diverse illustrations. I just felt like I wasn't being represented. Who's going to do this or who's going to release this? Why not me? Early March 2020, you started to switch from this is an obstacle that we have to get through to this is a reality that we have to live with. I think we hit a low as a team where it was almost like we ran out of gas. And when you hit that point where you're in the dark, you have to create your own light. I woke up that morning and saw from Burger King a tweet on International Women's Day. We really think we should do something, but we have to do it today. We knew that this was a pressing issue. People were feeling the pain of it right now, and we wanted to make a positive impact right away. The company literally made a 180. People now were noticing, and my mind was just like, Pfft. I created a product that sparked conversation that created action. We leveraged no-code tools to create a platform where people could go to this website and leave messages of encouragement, positivity for frontline workers. The results that we were getting were astronomical compared to the year before. Eventually, you'll get to a place where you surround yourself with so many you know, smart and amazing people, and there is no risk of failure anymore. No-code tools make it so that we don't have to worry about the how, and we get to worry about the what if. I think we're going to see a lot more creatives coming out of places we didn't know had amazing people. This is really going to change the game for us. always love watching that trailer it's so inspiring uh yeah before i get into my first question about it just want to say uh there's like three comments i saw on the live chat like tirza is saying love zara yes please help their website uh marcus is saying timothy ricks you are my hero tito is saying amazing people together uh yes yes agreed agreed uh trailer so dope get pumped every time i see it same here cooper is getting the chills from it yes so generation no code um we'll start with you tim uh you had the first episode and i want to know a little bit behind the scenes of what would happen uh what was it like filming with Matthew and Cena and his team? And like, what was your biggest highlight from that whole experience? I think my biggest highlight was just meeting Matthew. Like I watched all his videos throughout college and the, the future and like just seeing him in person and getting to go out for lunch and like hang out with the whole team was just a lot of fun. So, so you got like a little starstruck when we got to meet him? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And um, like, so filming for, for Matthew, what was that experience like? Were, were you uh, nervous to be in front of like a whole production crew like that? Um, what, did it feel a little bit awkward at times? Like, what was that like? It didn't feel awkward. It was just a, a lot of takes, like simple things like walking up steps. We might have did eight takes of, of something like that. So, <laughs> yeah. Eight takes. And um, it, you mentioned uh, earlier, 
uh, off the stream that you had a couple of takes walking through the door that 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 one superhero type of moment as you're walking through the office door. Yeah, like from every angle, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it felt like we were on, um, I don't know, some sort of Hollywood set because they were so like professional. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Melissa, I want to know about uh, what it was like for you for uh, for filming during Generation No Good. For me, it was also surreal. Um, I wasn't too much involved in the Webflow community at, the, at that point because I didn't even know it existed. So that was the first time that I met Matthew. And, but I had seen his work and I, I was super excited to, to meet him and Archie and Jamal. Everybody was just so professional. And I was just trying to learn everything that they were doing with the light, the setup, how to set up the mood of the house. So yeah, I think for me, that was super, super exciting. And then also being able to go have lunch with them and talk and hear their stories and learn about them. So you learned about the no-code community through this production? Yes, exactly. Oh, oh yeah. I feel like you, you've done a 180 or, or something. You're like, wait, <laughs> there's this no-code community? And then you just jump straight in. You're like, oh, my God, we got to do a Webflow party. We got to do a yeah. Webflow Twitter show. I need we to gotta... meet everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like shaking hands with everyone virtually. Hi, nice yes. to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. My name is Melissa. <laughs> yes, I'm from Colombia. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm, I'm loving how you're sharing all this knowledge and this this energy and this passion for no code. Thank so you. Yeah, thank you so much for both of you for 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 being a part of the docuseries. Um, but Melissa, what was your uh, favorite highlight for the whole experience? Um, I think that for me, really, it was being able to tell my story so other people could get inspired mm. because I, I felt stuck many times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my startup didn't work out at that time. And like Matthew told me when he was here, he said, maybe it didn't work out for you at that time, but it happened because now you're here. Yeah. So that's what I want other people to see. Like, if you're going through a situation, know that it's just not the moment for it. Like, yeah. there's perfect timing for everything, and you just have to trust the universe or yeah. whoever it is that is doing this, you know? Totally connect with you on that. I mean, you just got to you, – you give to the universe, and the universe gives back twice yeah. as much, and then you have to give yeah. four times, and it just becomes exponential, the back-and-forth energy uh, that you give exactly. to the universe. Um, and also, by the way, the ch the clothes, that the fashion that you chose for the filming, great job. <laughs> Thank you. Are those all Zara? <laughs> we actually chose it with Matthew. It was a whole thing. Yeah, I was sending him it pictures, like, what should I wear this, that? <laughs> awesome awesome all right uh let's get into the next section of this live stream uh this is a build with me stream well not with me but with tim and melissa now um what they're going to do is build a custom slider component now usually in the build with me i ask you all in the live chat to open up webflow and start following along but this one is kind of advanced and we want to go through it really quickly but you'll be able to to clone this project and reverse engineer, watch the recording of the stream and just follow along that way. All right, so uh, we'll share the link uh, at the end of the stream or in the description box below. But with, without further ado, uh, Tim and Melissa, let's learn together. I wanna learn how to make a custom slider component in Webflow, so uh, take it away. Awesome. Well, first, I need to say a huge shout out to Melissa for creating this design. Um, so, yeah, Melissa, I don't know if you want to walk us through maybe the Figma file and show what yes. we'll be creating. Cool. Of course. Okay, so what I did here was I created uh, three panels for the custom slider. And what we're going to do is pull the content from the CMS, which we already pre-created. Um, and what I wanted to do here was change as the, the slides move, I wanted the color to change for all of the elements, except the images, the images will just be changing. And then this element right here will be a background, the video. 
So I just thought it was really cool, something very modern and something that Tim could use to do his wizardry. And then I could add some uh, Webflow animations to it. So, awesome. yeah, Tim, go ahead. Uh, I guess we could start by just building it. So we'll jump right into Webflow and get Perfect. started. Okay, awesome. Do you want to tell them about the wizardry and the little code that we have here? Yeah, so we're using the wizardry technique that just basically makes our body font size fluid. That means that all the text and content inside is going to scale uh, when we resize the browser window. Um, for designs like this where the text is really large, it can really be helpful to have things just sort of be fluid. Exactly. So, okay, so let's go over the build a little bit. So we, as I said, we pre-built the CMS. So we have the CMS here, uh, which is just three blogs. And what we did, what did, we did here was add the heading, add a color and the image. So that's going to be the same for the other two items. Uh, so back in our designer, you can see that we have a header, which is just the, the outer wall. This is what I tell everybody at my Webflow party. This is the outer wall of the project. And what we're doing here is just giving it a styling of flex and giving a width of 100% and a minimum height of 100 be, uh, viewport height. And uh, we're giving it a position of relative because we're going to be moving a lot of stuff inside and adding absolute and, and that type of positioning. So inside of the header, we're going to have two panels. And those are going to wrap these elements here on the left and then this element here on the right. So what we did here, the first step is add a little bit of padding, everything following EMs. And for the width of the left panel, we're giving it a 50% width. Um, so that's just everything that we're doing for the header left. Now on the arrow that we're dropping in, we are giving it a auto, auto, uh, well, first we're giving it a flex uh, center and then uh, justify it to the end. And we are giving it a auto, auto, so we can position it in the middle. And we're just giving it a minus 4.565 4, uh, PM margin, just so we can adjust it to the to the end of the of the panel. And if we go back to the design and we stand on top of the element, we can see that we have 146 pixels by four, 146 pixels. So by using the wizardry met method, um, we can actually do I. Yeah, 146. So what we do here is 146 divided by 16 EM, press enter, and right away we get our EM measurement. So you don't have to use anything else to just transfer the, the measurement. To Melissa, I, I noticed that you're not yes. using the Webflow slider component. So yes. this makes this really, really more advanced. Um, Tim, exactly. Melissa, like why why not start from the Webflow slider component and work from there rather than building everything from scratch? I think in this case, we want it to be able to add as many collection items as the, we want to it. So with the slider component, we have to define a, a set number of slides. And then we're going to be using a library that has some great accessibility benefits where people can navigate with their arrow keys or click and drag. And there's a lot of nice features that we'll go over. Uh, with this. Ah, oh, I like that. You, you, you got me with accessibility. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. yeah let's keep going. <laughs> okay. So the arrow now we're giving it a position of absolute and we're position positioning it to the left and we're giving it a Z index of 20. Now you're, you're going to see why we're giving it a Z index on 20 on as we go along. Now inside of the arrow, we've embedded the arrow SVG, which is this one right here. And what we did here was drop a little bit of custom code. We didn't just add the image and then, you know, uploaded the image to Webflow. We just pasted the custom code and we gave it, we gave it a, a variable of current color. And what that's going to do is that if we're standing on the arrow and we go to the text color, and let's say we change it, it's also going to change the color of the parent element. So that's pretty cool. Hmm. 
And then uh, we're just repeating the process for the second arrow. And the only difference here is we're giving it a, co a co combo class of is right because we are rotating the arrow minus 180 degrees. So that's basically what we have on the outer wall of the whole project. And now what we're going to do is work on the header flex. So the first element that we have here is the, the um, heading. And we're going to go back to our design and we're going to see that it, it, the, the dimension is, uh, the measurement is 339 pixels. So following that same principle of the EM, what we're going to do is take 336 divided by 16 EM, press enter, and right away we have our measurement on 21 EM. And we just gave it a little bit of padding and margin just to position it better. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add these two elements right here. So Tim, do you want to help me add this? Yeah, so let's add in a div first and we're gonna give it a class of video. And from there, we'll give it margin auto left and right to just center it from the, into the middle. Mm -hmm. Perfect. The middle of that column. Yep, yeah. right. middle of its parent. <clears throat> And then if we look at the Figma file, we need to figure out the width of this video. So we'll just copy that over and then divide that by 16. Why is divide by 16 though? Yeah, so in most browsers, uh, the user's default font size is 16. And mm. whenever we use M's or RIMs, it's inheriting from that font size. So if our base font size is 16 to convert pixels to that uh, measurement, we just mm -hmm. divide it by the 16 and um, got it. Yep. Okay. Cool. And then from there, we're going to add in another div. So instead of applying a fixed height on this, we're going to give this cl a class of video underscore height. It's just going to be an element inside and we're going to give it top padding of a hundred percent. And that'll make this a perfect square. So this is a great trick for setting aspect ratios because if we decrease or increase the width of its parent, the video element, the um, height will increase and decrease as well. Um, so this is great for setting aspect ratios on uh, elements. Huh. Right. And then a little trick that we're going to do here is stop the width of the element at, six, at 65%. So if we go into, let's add maybe like a little color here. Yeah. So if we go back to the EM width, you see that it just stops there, so it won't hit the the arrow. So that's mm. pretty cool. And that's important because when we give the user control over the font size, they can make everything with using EMs the site the font size larger. So we don't want that video element to get too large where it runs into the arrows on the side. Yeah. So we're mm -hmm. setting that max percentage width to just cap things off. Okay. Exactly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be adding the video wrapper. So let's go back to the style guide and we have it here. And we're just going to copy this and go back to the project uh, right here and then drop the element. And actually let's make this relative because inside we have some properties. So it's just going to blow out of proportion. Awesome. So perfect. So now that we have our video, let's go to the header. Oh, actually, no, let me stand on the header flex. So now what we're going to do here is drop the paragraph. Uh, we're going to be animating this with um, Tim's process. So let's just start okay. here and add the div block. And this is going to start pulling the classes from the slide slider. So Tim, if you want to help me and start giving me the classes. Yeah. So when, uh, one, one question from the live chat, um, yeah. from Rob, he's asking, so would you need to add the wizardry code to design this way with fluidity? And I think you touched on that at the beginning, Melissa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go, ahead. go ahead, Tim. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, there's lots of ways to design with fluid type, but basically we'd want some, some sort of base reference to be fluid. Um, in this case with wizardry, we're using the body font size and the wizardry website gives us the code we need uh, to make that fluid. And then everything's set to EMs in this case. 
is referencing that body font size. So because the body font size is fluid, all our EM values and Webflow are fluid also. Awesome. Awesome. Got it. And again, uh, everyone who's in live chat or even watching recording, you can uh, clone this project for free into your own Webflow account, and you can just see all the the code that um, is added here. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jim. Before I continue, I'm going to add a combo class here that we need to add to this element, which is tricks. Uh, not this one. Of course. Sorry. This one. <laughs> of course. So let's add this combo class because Tim is going to be using this to animate it in, in after, and it's going to be super cool. So we're going to continue with this with this section with, with this component, which is the slide. So let's drop the collection list and let's connect it to our blog. Cool. Okay, Tim. Yeah. So let's give this one a class of slide underscore underscore track. And these are just classes that the library we're using is going to be looking for to make this a functional slider. So this one will have a class of slide list and the collection items get the class of slide slide. Awesome. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to drop our paragraph and we're going to connect it to the heading, to the headline. And now what we're going to do here, so remember that on the design, we have the change of color. So we want to be able to grab that color uh, from the collection. So what, what we do with that is drop a div block. We're going to give it a class of color. And what is happening here is that we're going to connect it to the background color. So if we turn that on, we're going to see just our little, our little blog with color, and it's just going to pull the green, the blue, and the and the pink. So let's hide that for now. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm confused right now. Like, you dropped in a collection list, and it's only showing one of the headlines. What happened to the other ones? Usually they... So the list is display flex, so it's stacking all the items side by side. And it's also set to overflow hidden. So oh, if we turn okay. that off, you'll see them all. But the slider will make this draggable too, to where you'll be able to see the items side by side when they're in view. Yeah. These little tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So now actually we're going to give this a combo class of co content because Tim is going to need that as well. And what we have here is just a display none and or not none but uh block and then the width of 29 em and max width of 100 percent and we're adding an overflow hidden um and that is all so now we're going to go into our header right and in here we're going to be following the same process that we did on the panel left but without the video so we're just going to be dropping our image right so let's go back here and uh, drop a div block. And this div block is going to be having the, the class of slide. And inside of there, we're going to be dropping the collection list. And we're going to connect this again to the blog. So let's just give the classes. So this is going to be slide track, slide list, and slide, slide. And now inside of there, we're going to be dropping the image. We're going to connect it to our CMS and we have our image. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to give it a class of slide image. And for this one, remember how in the first one on this slide, we had a combo class of content yeah. because he's going to be using that. So now we're going to give a combo class on the right side of photo. So yeah, that's just the process to build that. So. Just to go over like a little overview of the animation that I did here, they are native Webflow animations. And what I did here was a page load. 
So we took our video SVG, the initial state is zero and zero for the X and Y axis. And uh, the SVG, video SVG right here. And then it has a 0 0.6 delay because I really wanted it slow and a duration of 0 0.3 with an easing of out port and the X and Y axis at one. Okay. So that and the image, the video and the image. So these two elements have basically the same type of animation. And okay. what I do here is I just duplicate the animation and then um, set the, the, the final state. And for this video height, is it the video, the video wrapper? What I did is just create a size animation. Um, so it just comes from the bottom. And that mm. is all really I did for the, for the page load. Easy, right? Easy. <laughs> Now the really? hard part. <laughs> well, I mean, all of that. I mean, just to set it up is 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 um, a lot of work, but like uh, it, it just shows what you can do as a designer, and it's just um, amazing what you've built. And there's there's times when I'm like, I wish I could design like that. Like I'm, <laughs> I I don't consider myself uh, much of a developer or a designer. I'm in this weird middle area yeah. and i'm like i'm glad webflow exists so i can kind of play mm -hmm. both parts but um yeah so tim uh let's bring it on uh let's uh finish up this project show us your wizardry stuff and let's uh add the animations that you're gonna add okay awesome so let's see from here i'm gonna i'm gonna open up the project and just pick up where we left off so i believe it's this one here um, so what we're doing here, basically, Wait, was the loader bar always yellow? <laughs> That's just my extension. Um, for of converting. course, of yeah. course. Um, so yeah, what we're basically doing here, let me request design access is we're going to create some letter animations when the page first loads up. And to do that, we had to wrap each letter in a span one by one. Um, but since we're pulling this text from the CMS, we, we don't have that option. Um, so what we're going to do is just add on this combo class of tricks. I, I've done some tutorials on these letter animations before, and we just have some code that any text that has this class, it'll break all the letters up into spans for us so we can animate them, and we don't have to do that uh, manually. Which is great oh, because... My gosh. I used yeah. to do a manual. <laughs> it's a slow process. It is. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're going to basically publish that and we'll be able to check it out on the live site and see, um, what's going on. So I think if I do this right here, refresh, this one already had that class. So if we look in here, um, see each of these are their own span and they have that class of letter. So we can just animate that class, um, and do whatever we want there. And then that's published. So we're good. So we're going to be using a little bit of custom code for this and, um, it's really helpful to rely on libraries sometimes because they write the code for us. We don't have to write everything from scratch. It makes it kind of easy to use. And most libraries have examples uh, that we can just copy the code that they write, and we don't have to just start from a blank canvas. So we can really see what's going on here. Um, I will say this, when you're using a library, you usually have to um, import it first. So I'm using two in this case. One is called Splide. And that is our slider library. And the other one is going to be called animate.js. Uh, so I'm just using this CDN here. And they'll give us the, the tags that we need to import. So we can just copy over the whole tag. And we usually want to just put that in our custom code, which I've already mm. done that here, the splide and the animate.js library. Um, and then after that, we can actually um, write some code using those libraries. And it really speeds up the process. So. In this case, I'm using a service called Code Sandbox. Uh, it's completely free to use. And I can spin up a, a JavaScript file that I can write and it affects my website in real time. So if I change my H1 and I change the text and I make it say something like, hello, uh, Nelson, and I save that, if I head back over to Melissa's site and refresh, um, what we'll notice is the text changes and I didn't have to publish Webflow. To oh, see that's that a time saver. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> so, I'm doing um, that. I'm doing that from now on. <laughs> <laughs> it's really handy. Um, so what we're going to do is create a couple sliders. We'll start with just doing that. Um, so I'll just copy over this uh, code right here. We're creating a slider called text slider, and it's uh, targeting that class of slide with the combo class of content that mm -hmm. Melissa set up for us. And then we'll also create a separate one for our image slider. And after we do that, we're going to sync the two up so that if someone moves the image slider, it also moves the text slider. They stay linked together. Um, we have two collection lists, which are two separate sliders on our page. So if we save that and we run it, we'll notice, watch what happens. First of all, now I can drag this left and right. And when I let go, it snaps into place. But also okay. the text down here is changing. Oh. Like it's showing the next collection item text. So these are two sliders I can drag on either of them to basically swipe through the slides. Huh. Um, so we have that linked up and good to go. Uh, the next thing we want to do is change the color of the entire page um, mm -hmm. whenever the slide changes. And the way Melissa has this set up too is like if we change the body font color on the site, um, everything inside, like all the text, the arrows, the icons are all changing color. So we can control the color of everything from the body font color. Um, so what we're going to do is we have that hidden div that Melissa created inside the collection item. So whenever our slider is moved, whenever we move the slider, we're going to go find that hidden div with that class of color inside the current um, slider. And then from there, we're just going to get its background color and apply that background color to the body. So <laughs> watch what happens now. Like every time we change the slide, the, the color of everything on the page is updating based on the, the color field in our CMS. Stop. Stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> my brain. I'm really, I'm totally cloning this right after, and I'm just going to dissect what, I, and put my brain back together, because, okay. <laughs> nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and do those. Um, f well, first, let's link up the arrows, because we created those link blocks in Webflow with a class of arrow and the combo class back and next. So whenever we click on those arrows, we're just going to advance the slider. Um, so now if I click these, they're linked up. And like I said before, the great thing about this library is you can also use your arrow keys on, uh, to navigate, or you can click and drag. So that's really cool. And then let's just create our text animation as our last step. Um, so we'll start by animating sort of this headline here. And that's our display text. And we're going to animate all the little span classes inside um, with the class of letter. And this is just going to happen on page load. So if I refresh the page, you'll notice each letter is staggering up one after the other. Um, but we can change this really easy, which is nice. Like if we want a stronger delay between each letter fading out, we could switch it to 320 milliseconds. And when I refresh, now you'll notice each letter waits a lot longer uh, to fade up after each other. And then the we can speed up the duration of the whole animation. So we can make the whole duration 800 milliseconds. So now it's going to cram, like it's going to try and fit all those letters uh, into a shorter time. And we'll notice the animation just feels punchier because it's speeding up the whole animation, but still animating the, those letters one after the other. Um, and then this field is just how long it waits before the animation starts. So I can make it wait a full second. And now it waits a little while, and then our letters come in. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what we're doing with the staggering. And we'll also just do that with the paragraph text here inside the slide. Um, so I'll just, I basically created this animation that's also targeting the, um, the letters inside the individual collection items. And if we run that, that runs on page load once. But it, we want it to run every time we move the slider too. So we'll just copy our text animation. And we're going to also play that anytime we move our slider. We want the text to animate. Hmm. And if we run this, now every time we change our slide, you'll notice this uh, text down here is also animating as well and staggering in. 
Um, so that's just the custom code bits we're using for the slider, for the letter animations. The rest we're able to do with all native Webflow interactions, like how this spins forward or backward if we move the slider backwards. So there's a lot of um, a lot of unique things can be created when like combining a little bit of custom code with Webflow interactions and layout. We're able to get the build up faster. And then we just add code where it's going to make our lives easier or a little bit more efficient. So um, that's our build. I, 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 I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't, I don't know where my brain went. It, uh... Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to watch a recording of this and dissect this project. And again, everyone in live chat, you can clone this. Uh, uh, Matthew, wonderful mod in our community team, has linked the clonable, so you can do that now. Oh my god, so many, so many <laughs> tricks in there. Um, and uh, by the way, everyone in live chat, if you have questions, we're about to go into our uh, Q and A section of the of the stream. But if you have any questions you want me to ask Tim and Melissa, go ahead and start asking them now, and Matthew will send them over. But while while we're waiting for those questions, um, it's just amazing what Webflow is doing. I remember back in like. Uh, 2012, before I even knew what Webflow was, before Webflow even had be was in beta, um, I was at another job where I'm like, I wish it wasn't where designers had to throw over Photoshop designs to developers and the developers had to break everything apart. There needs to be a way to make a bridge between developers and designers. There needs to be a way. And, um, and when I saw Webflow for, for, for the first time, I'm like, wait, HTML and CSS is being written for me visually in real time. What is going on? And to see two community members who one coming from a designer background and one coming from a Lego engineering background <laughs> and, and coming together, putting no code in design and low code, putting it together. It's just amazing because you both understand each other now using this platform. And I'm just like, that is so cool. <laughs> That is uh -huh. so, so, so cool. So thank you so, so much for, for sharing those tricks and that design. It's, it's so beautiful to see you both uh, sharing with the community. All right. So we have some questions. Um, we have two questions right now. Um, I, I guess it, it's uh, for Tim. Uh, Hunter Reynolds is asking, Timothy, what is ice cold liquid gold heritage that you can hold? What? So that's an inside <laughs> joke. So we did a retreat app in Webflow and made like this game from it. And that's one of the questions on the, the game that you had to get past. So the answer to that one is Coors Banquet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, another one. Manuel is asking Timothy, uh, where is the text script file actually located? Can you access the root fault of the Webflow project somehow? The text script. Oh, the um, the JavaScript file. It's yeah. actually hosted in Code Sandbox, and then I'm just copying the URL to that file and then running it inside Webflow. So, awesome, awesome. Um, uh, Melissa, uh, my question to you: um, When you started to work with with Tim on, on this build, like, what was the thing that first blew your mind? Because to me, that that color change of the whole page that was like wait, wait, what just happened? How? <laughs> but um, when you started working on this project, what was your mind blowing moment? I think it was just how fast it was just like, oh, yeah, that's you do that by just doing this and just dropping a little bit of code. And I'm here like three hours doing an animation. <laughs> so for me, I think that was a, the best part. I think uh, both of us connect on that level of like, oh, we did every letter in Webflow and uh, interactions. Yes. And then yes. Tim's like, no, 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 it'll it, it'll cut up in spans by itself. Here, watch. Yeah, I showed him my my animations, and he almost fainted. He was like, no, let me show you, let me show you the way. <laughs> I will show you the way. This is the way. Um, uh, Adil. Um, uh, is asking how can we change the video when we go to the next slide? Mm. Oh, that's so, a great question. Yeah, go Melissa, ahead. you want to take? Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. 
Um, yeah, so like right now we have two sliders, one for the image panel and one for the text. So we'd probably want to put the video inside the text slider. So that way when one changes, the other changes also. There's that option or the option of creating a third slider just for the video. But mm -hmm. some kind of way it needs to be a, a unique video for each collection item. So it needs to go inside of one of the collection list we already have. Yep, makes sense. Makes sense. Um, this one's coming from our wonderful mod, uh, Matthew. Um, and I think this is going to be the, the last question list we get anymore. But Matthew's asking, what did you both learn from each other during the process of preparing for this stream? Hello? Oh, yeah. oh OK. That's an interesting <laughs> yeah. one. I, I'm actually thinking, Tim, you go first. <laughs> I mean, I learned a lot about like design, just out, we were able to jump into the Figma file together and just sort of collaborate a little um, and like learning how Melissa thinks about design and how to work together through that was really fun. Um, what else? Like even just like everyone has a different way of building in Webflow. So like just learning from the way Melissa builds and taking inspiration from that um, was really cool too. Yeah, mm. I think for me it was, uh seeing him work as well, like see how he structures his websites, how he uses measurements, the wizardry, and just how fast he is at building. So I think for me, that was just uh, very enlightening and yes. fun to see. Yes. Well, thank you, Dr. Dr. Strange for, <laughs> for helping Tim. <laughs> in a different universe but um thank you thank you both so much um i don't see any more uh questions actually there's one more um i think i'll take it uh alexander's asking timothy please answer how to work in gestures in mobile devices with the scripts i i Gest think you've already touched on that the, the dragging of of splide you can yeah. touch and drag yeah, it does. It works great on mobile. So just find a library that really is meant to handle that and then use it and take advantage of what's already built. Yeah. Yeah. Don't um uh uh rebuild the wheel or what's the saying? Oh I my reinvent brain is still <laughs> reinvent. <laughs> All right. Uh Diego's asking, uh Timothy, are you considering dropping an advanced course in terms of JavaScript for Webflow? Something for like awards or even Webflow University. Um, I've done like a few lessons already that I'm trying to build out into a course outline. So I have that in Notion and it's publicly accessible for anyone who wants to see. Um, just because I do a lot of videos across like YouTube, Patreon that would fall into what would be my course anyway. So I just started outlining those in a clearer format. So nice nice thank you thank you well that's all the time we have for questions thank you for everyone who's dropped a question in the live chat or just dropped some hype and encouraging uh comments in the live chat thank you all so much but uh yeah before we go uh melissa tim we'll start with melissa uh do you want to call out any social media uh accounts uh so people can find you and follow you yeah, so anybody can find me on Twitter, Mel Meli Del Mar 06, and on Instagram, Melissa Del Mar Mendez. Awesome. And where can they find the Webflow party? At eureka.com, and that's E U R E C A H.com. Awesome. Awesome. I'll try to make it this Saturday, but it's really early for Pacific oh, time zone. This Saturday is going to be interesting, actually. Oh, can't wait. I haven't announced it. <laughs> oh, Tim, uh, go ahead and shout out your socials. Um, You can find me at uh, Tim Ricks on Instagram and Timothy Ricks on YouTube. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Um, yeah, so that's the end of this stream. Uh, next week, we're going to have a, a special, another special guest is from the Webflow staff. We're going to interview design system engineer Katie Fujihara. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you again so much, Tim and Melissa. And thank you to the audience for, for watching and hanging out with us. Uh, Tim, Melissa, uh, whoever wants to go first, do you have anything else that you'd like to say to the community? Um, I think just keeping kind, sharing, helping others, and can't wait to see what everybody's building soon. 
Yay. Yeah. <laughs> to echo off that, keep pushing the bounds of what's possible in Webflow. Every time I see like a new clonable, I got to dive in and see, all right, how did they build this? What do they do here? So yeah. um, just keep being awesome. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Again, you can catch both of their episodes and other episodes that are coming out for Generation No Code, the docuseries, over at webflow.com slash TV. Do it right after this stream if you can, if you have time. Thank you all so, so much. If you're in the live chat or if you're just watching or you're watching a recording of this, we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.